Hello, and thank you so very much for joining me tonight. Before we get into today's session, I'd first like to take a moment and thank our sponsor for today's video, which is Blinkist. Blinkist is an awesome app that helps you fit more reading into your life. There are thousands of titles to choose from in an extensive list of categories, all condensed into just 15 minutes. You can read your blinks or listen to them podcast style, which is my personal preference, and you have access to them even offline. Blinkist already has over 14 million active users, and I'm happy to share that I am one of them. I so enjoy this app. I really enjoy this app. I love putting on different books in the background while I'm cooking, while I'm cleaning, while I'm relaxing, while I'm driving. Not everything I consume is all that healthy. <laughs> I like my tea. I like my reality TV, you know? I'm from the Jersey Shore. But when I put on Blinkist in the background, I know that my subconscious isn't picking up too much. Um, I have a little more control over what my subconscious is picking up. I'll just put it that way. I feel like it's a bit healthier for my brain. It's perfect to put on in the background. You can just fill up a library or fill up a list and let them play. Some titles that I would recommend to you are Safe People by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. This is Your Mind on Plants by Michael Pollan and Radical Honesty by Brad Blenton. If you enjoy full-length audiobooks, Blinkist Premium subscribers get a special member pricing of up to 60% off the regular retail price. Blinkist has now teamed up with popular podcasts to offer short casts to get you to the heart of a podcast episode quick. The first 100 people to click the link below in my video description here will get unlimited access to Blinkist for one full week and you can cancel any time within that week making it free and if you decide to follow through with the full membership you will be getting 25% off. Thank you so very much to Blinkist for sponsoring this video and now let's get into our session. Hello, and thank you so very much for joining me tonight. I go by Loon and Nate, and what I'm creating for you today could simply be a video to chill out, and if you like ASMR, I do like to incorporate ASMR into the sessions that I create. They're not your straight, pure ASMR videos for sure, so if you're looking for something like that, this might not be the one for you, I apologize, you know? You could use this as a method to communicate to your subconscious mind. And if you're open to the concept of energy work by proxy, you can use this as a remote distance energy work session. I get some questions sometimes on like, do I have to have my eyes on the screen? How is it coming to the screen at me? And really, it's not about the screen. The screen is more for the ASMR to maybe help you focus your attention. But the energy work is beyond time and space. It is beyond form. Okay? I have created a series like this before, but it was very early into my channel here, so I wanted to create another one. So if you'd like more information about um, this series, please look below. It'll be in the video description for you. But first, we're gonna set our intention because this isn't exactly a general third eye um, video. It's about working with a hyperactive third eye, a hypercharged third eye, and we all fall into this, you know, there's no wrong or right with our chakra points or energy points or these associative points, however you want to look at them, being out of alignment or being hyper or being low. There's no real harm necessarily in that. It happens. It's natural. But it can become more, if it, if it pr is prolonged, it can become a bit of an issue, energetically speaking, of course. So when the third eye is hyper-energized, we might be in a delusional state, we might be feeling overwhelmed, we might be feeling very confused, we might be like, why did that go wrong? I, I knew that was going to go right, why is my intuition wrong? 
we might have our imagination really kind of creating these scenes in our mind of um, perhaps failure or perhaps uncomfortable things or almost like playing out arguments or playing out memories where you felt disempowered in some way so like reliving energetically a disempowering time perhaps humiliation perhaps when you got your heart broken perhaps when you were victimized in some sense you know what i mean that in all of the spectrums of that word and replaying it in your mind the that activates your emotions then energetically you're there again you're that lonely child again or you're that heartbroken soul again and it kind of can potentially um like have us fall back into almost a dimensional space where you know we're not really wanting to be there it's almost like the the like a runaway wild horse sometimes the third eye area we can be like seeking signs, seeking information, seeking, oh, everything led me here. I always use this example. Let me set my intention here today. And then I'll share an example for you because I'd really love for you to understand the context of what I'm trying to talk to you about today. Um, but I remember a story that has to do with Brad Pitt where a fan of his snuck into his house and you know when they interviewed her she was like oh well you know i knew it was right because i saw this color then i saw that color and then i could see this color was in the bedroom and it's like you're going against the free will of this individual who happens to be brad freaking pet <laughs> and you're making up your own delusions to suit the narrative that you feel most comfortable with you know the fantasy and I'm all for a fantasy, you know, like there's a big role that that plays in a very beneficial, very serving aspect of creation and imagination and all of much, you know, amazing things. But also like we have to think like, is this helping me? Is this healthy for me? Am I doing harm to others because of my delusions here? Am I going against the free will of another because I'm so fixated on them and I want to really believe that they're talking to me or they're sending me messages? I know this is a very specific area and I don't want to say that every case of a hyper-energized third eye area would lead to something like this, but it's just a good example. We can put the pieces together in so many ways, you know, and that can be, and that needs to be grounded. And that's basically what we're going to be doing to support the temperance of the third eye today. To soothe the space, we are going to ground into our bodies. We are going to return to a grounded sense of reality. And I don't mean to say that your imagination is not reality. I believe that it's it's there, you know, it's a fine veil between them sometimes. But we'll set our intention on behalf of the pardon me, highest and greatest good in perfect comfort and perfect alignment. It is our intention today to support those who deal with the theme in their life or presently or in the past or just something you want to address going forward even if you're not kind of vibrating at this way right now but address the hyper-energized third eye address delusionment, address confusion address seeking answers outside of yourself or making up stories within yourself or reliving stories or experiences whether things that have happened or things that we're kind of creating in our own way, it all kind of falls into your inner vision, your inner senses here. And support the grounding, returning back to the body, returning back to the reality, perhaps the mundane, perhaps the, the chore. <laughs> and I say that jokingly, of course. To support ourselves, to support our overall alignment, the function of the third eye to be working on behalf of our highest good and not, uh, you know, it getting it carrying us away somewhere. This can happen. <laughs> These associations can carry us away a little bit. It's all okay. It's all learning experience. There's no reason to beat ourselves up. 
But our intention today is to return back to the body from these ethereal spaces to call back our mind, call back our logic, call back our primal instinct or work with rather the primal instincts and get into the body and feel what it's like here feel your emotions, feel your sensations connect with others, connect with, you know, reality and please forgive me, I'm not trying to sound condescending when I say that but bring us back because here is where the lessons are here is where we are meant to create, right? This is the experience. And through this we will move and highlight our intuition, access our intuition through the most empowered ways. Okay. If you have your own intention, you would like to set, please have a look at this little flame, this little doorway passage point of transformation and send in your wish declare your will choose your level of engagement here and we'll carry on these sticks, these are pine and we're just going to listen to the sounds first and just kind of connect with our body I'm going to just go around you just slicing any tethers to delusions or confusion disempowerment, the intention to release cords, again, tethers, which might be pulling you, in a sense, out of your line state. Burn a little of this pine here. Just to soothe, support, empower your grounded. divine awareness, your clairvoyance, your claircognizance, and the like in a grounded, empowered way.
be building a crystal grid around the candle here, so I just want to show you these stones. This is a peach venturine. using the third eye area. It's kind of focusing to temper and release that excess. sort of variety, but beautiful nonetheless. And again, it's like a soft pinky peach kind of color. Also very helpful for quieting the mind, soothing, tempering, returning to love, returning to the body, returning to the experience, and being empowered. Hyper energized point, no matter where it is, can lead to blockages, it can lead to stagnation. Almost like something burnt or thick or just pushing so hard that it's not really moving anywhere. So just releasing that excess, releasing that hyper stimulation. supporting perhaps any, um, you know, delusions. I'm so sorry, that word is very harsh and I don't mean to make it sound super harsh, it's just the best word I can think of. For example, if you want love and you want to experience love and you're feeling those flirty feelings, those crush-like feelings and, you know, you're like, oh, making up this story that this person you know, really is interested in you back, it's reciprocated, and maybe it's not yet. Maybe that person's in a relationship. Maybe this isn't the right time for them. Maybe they're not who you think they are. Maybe you've been projecting, this is another big thing with the hyper-energized third eye, projecting so much on the world around you that you're not exactly connecting with the reality, in a sense. And again, please use all of my language today with generous of salt. I do not mean to be offensive. So let's just pull any of that emotional sort of projecting energy that we do. We all do it. I've done it. I did it last year. <laughs> you know, I can remember doing this and being like, what the heck? Why did I do that? That's not like me. I should know better. <laughs> but it just happens. So let's cut pull any of that out if it is formed through a desire if it's formed through a desire a thing that you want to create or experience it will serve you better to deal with a harmonized balanced area of this not only reality not only the tangible but the expansive the hyper energized third eye often creates a tunnel vision of sorts we really Hyper focus or confusion. Now, just to support. 
support the body connection. This is a really yummy piece of carnelian, incredibly dark. And I'm going to bring it back as I work with the sacral area, drawing a bridge through the heart up to the third eye, down to the sacral, through the heart up to the third eye, down to the sacral. And just connecting to the senses here, connecting to the world around you. It is a power to escape the world around you, don't get me wrong. It is a strength. When it becomes too much though, you know, it's, it's too much. You'll know. You won't feel like you're getting anywhere. You'll feel confused. You'll feel like, why isn't this happening? Or why am I forcing it? Just connecting this bridge, this pathway, this channel representation of your higher mind, the representation of your primal instinct, your creative force, your senses, your connections here. And supporting the kind of grounding nature of this. of how things can come about and sometimes in hyperactive third eye just really tunnel visions really condenses really compresses compresses excuse me all the pathways so we're just drawing through placing this in the third eye area. This is a optical calcite, little tiny itty bitty piece. So cute. And I'm going to just be focusing to channel through and place this into the third eye area. This is supporting, yes, like vision, yes, imagination, but stabilized, building blocks, um, coming together. You know, it's a very what is the word I'm looking for here? Just a very, um, oh gosh, supportive stone to work with to still connect with the intuition yet keep it grounded, keep it focused, keep it purposeful, keep it um, empowered, right, and aligned for you. So I'm just going to focus on the third eye area here and place this in. I'm just going to channel through with the intention to, I'm so sorry, 
the intention to harmonize, balance, align, empower, temper, soothe, support your third eye correspondence, your subtle senses, your imagination, your universal mind, your dream mind, your mind that recognizes happenstance and synchronicities, your mind that reads the symbolic meaning behind things, your mind that reads That's such a beautiful thing to have working in the most effective way for you. Grounding that into the body. Grounding that into the experience. of the heart to the third eye. So your third eye, your subtle senses, your subtle mind, your higher mind, your innate mind, your creative mind is working on behalf of your heart, behalf of your soul, behalf of your mission here, your purpose, your desire, your manifestations, your ultimate goals your heart channeling through and bridging these points channeling through holding this frequency of balance alignment connecting with the auric field influencing in a supportive way your auric field around you, your personal atmosphere to hold this balance, to hold this temperance you might find over the next few days and let me just say if this resonates with you I would encourage you to practice it at least three times and you may notice over the next few days three, but up to 21, you might notice things where you were projecting onto them and creating what you thought it was, you know, adding your own lens so much so that, you know, I, I struggle to communicate about this because on one hand, I see the advantage of that and I do believe all is mind, but on the other hand, if it's specifically, if it's um, like going against other people like friends and family, people you love, or just people at large, and you're imposing how you see them on them, but that is not the reality, that is not how they think, that's not how they are, etc. You'll see yourself realize this and be able to make those changes. If this is an issue of confusion, of just being like, where am I supposed to go? Where is the universe guiding me? You will feel yourself called back to a more practical approach of like, hey, you drinking enough water? Hey, you getting enough sleep? Hey, you making sure that you're not um, filling your mind and watching a hundred <laughs> tarot card readings a day, you know, or constantly seeking outer guidance in some way? It's about connecting to the your your living experience at this time to balance that. And the experience is not strictly about the physical, that's not what I'm saying, but when the third eye is hyper-energized, it's good to return here to help bring back that equilibrium, okay?
Well, I hope you feel supported. I hope you enjoyed this session. The next in this series will be working with the third eye also, but for when it is under-energized, all right? So, I'm trying to really fill up a catalog here that anyone can access at any time to support them regarding these parts of correspondence, these aspects of the human experience. It is my total honor to serve in any way, so I do hope that I was able to. Thank you so very much for allowing me to share a little piece of your path tonight and for being such a significant part of mine. From the very bottom of my heart, I bow to the divine within you <laughs> and I and to this interesting and beautiful connection that we share. So very much love to you and namaste.